In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Friends, welcome to St. Philip's here at uh, Ringwood North for this uh, Blackburn North. I did that last time I was here. It's the Norths. Um, uh, Blackburn North for this uh, funeral liturgy for Father Francis Arnold, Frank Arnold. Uh, to many of the priests I gather, um, Chick Arnold, uh, a bit of a throwback to his time in the seminary, uh, but who is so faithfully uh, present here as the parish priest of uh, the parish for so very, very many years from 1975 until uh, 2011, I believe. In that time and throughout his priestly ministry, uh, Father Frank was able to offer to all uh, who came uh, to, towards him the gift of that priesthood in ways that uh, were always nourishing and pastoral. So we give thanks to the Lord for that gift in offering now our prayers to the Lord for his eternal repose. Brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves for the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that the soul of Francis, your servant and priest, whom you honoured with sacred office while he lived in this world, may exalt forever in the glorious home of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the prophet Daniel. I, Daniel, was doing penance when I received this message from the Lord. At that time, Michael will stand up, the great prince who mounts guard over your people. There is going to be a time of great distress, unparalleled since nations first came into existence. When that time comes, your own people will be spared all those whose names are found written in the book. 
of those who lie sleeping in the dust of the earth, many will awake, some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting disgrace. The learned will shine as brightly as the vault of heaven, and those who have instructed many in virtue as bright as stars for all eternity. The word of the Lord. from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. We know that when the tent that we live in on earth is folded up, there is a house built by God for us, an everlasting home not made by human hands in the heavens. We are always full of confidence then when we remember that to live in the body means to be exiled from the Lord, going as we do by faith and not by sight. We are full of confidence, I say, and actually want to be exiled from the body and make our home with the Lord. Whether we are living in the body or exiled from it, we are intent on pleasing him, for all the truth about us will be brought out in the law court of Christ, and each of us will get what he deserves for the things he did in the body good or bad. The word of the Lord.
be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am, so that they may always see the glory you have given me, because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Father, righteous one, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these have known that you have sent me. I have made your name known to them and will continue to make it known so that the love with which you loved me may be in them and so that I may be in them. The, gos the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Francis Arnold was born to Samuel Arnold and Agnes Cleary on the 6th of November 1928 in Brunswick. He was baptised at St. Fidelis's Moorland, went to primary school there and then secondary school at St. Joseph's North Melbourne. He then attended Melbourne University. He was working as an actuary when he realised that the Lord was calling him to the priesthood. A man very much interested in racing, he contacted the Archdiocese and was given the first test to see if his vocation was genuine, told to come to the seminary for an appointment on Melbourne Cup Day. <laughs> Young Frank passed the test, going to Werribee for the appointment before turning around and going straight to Flemington. He entered Corpus Christi College in 1953. He was ordained a priest by Archbishop Simmons on the 24th of July, 1960, 62 years ago this Sunday. He spent the first couple of months in the Healesville Parish before being appointed curate at South Caulfield in early 1961. Interestingly, as a piece of trivia, his time as curate at South Caulfield coincided with a parishioner's miraculous recovery from an illness that became the second miracle for the beatification of St. Peter Julian Amard. Father Arnold was subsequently appointed curate at Dandenong in 1966 and Bennettswood in 1969, before appointments as administrator at Box Hill in 1972 and West Essendon in 1975. He was appointed to St. Philip's as parish priest beginning on the 22nd of November 1975. The day he arrived at his new parish happened to be the day of the parish fete. Father Arnold could be seen quietly wandering through the crowd looking for the parish secretary and meeting his new parishioners before he was asked to draw the main raffle. After he had been parish priest here for about three years, Archbishop Little asked Father Arnold to go to Rome for higher studies. Father Arnold replied that he would like a little more time at St. Philip's before studying. Archbishop Little agreed, but as Father Arnold told us at his 40th anniversary mass, he forgot to ask him again. <laughs> Father Arnold, of course, in his humility, did not remind the Archbishop, and so he was left alone to remain parish priest of St. Philip's for 36 years. It is appropriate then that we have gathered here today for this Requiem Mass where he offered the Holy Sacrifice thousands of times. We come to remember his life, to give thanks to God for his contribution to our lives, to admire his virtue in the hope that we might imitate it, and most importantly, to pray for the repose of his soul. In the second reading, St. Paul wrote of the confidence we have that this earthly life is not the end of our story. 
In fact, while we are here, we are in exile from our true home in heaven. Each of us will get what he deserves for the things he did in the body, good or bad. As we commend Father Arnold to the Lord, we do so with confidence as we remember his virtuous example to all of us, particularly to we priests present. Father Arnold was dedicated to his people. He said Mass here every day, simply faithful to the rubrics. He was always available for confessions and anointing of the sick. He was supportive of the parish school, and while he was shy and didn't like crowds, he made sure he was always there to present trophies on sports day and draw the raffle at the fete. He was also very supportive of Emmaus College, our regional secondary college. He also didn't like heat. There was a direct relationship between the temperature on Christmas Eve and the length of Father Arnold's homily. He never rushed to answer a question, pausing to think carefully before responding. He was a strong character who decided what was right and stuck to that even if it was unpopular. Uh, you will recall that the tabernacle used to be more or less where the Archbishop is sitting now. And I asked him one day why the tabernacle was off to the side and not in the middle. He then described for me the battle he had had with the diocesan authorities at the time. They were refusing to sign off on the plans for the church unless the tabernacle was built in a separate room outside the main church. Father Arnold refused to sign off on the plans himself unless the tabernacle was in fact in the church. And so the compromise was the tabernacle off to the side. I asked him when we were here together for the dedication of the new altar, what he thought uh, of the building of the sanctuary. And he said to me that he was pleased that the church building had been completed. Father Arnold was an excellent orator, preaching clearly, always faithful to the doctrine of the church, and taking into account whatever had been happening in the wider world during the week. He did not use notes, but knew well what he wanted to preach. It wasn't until I was a seminarian and hearing other priests in various parishes that I properly appreciated the quality of Father Arnold's homilies. The learned will shine as brightly as the vault of heaven, and those who have instructed many in virtue as bright as stars for all eternity. Had he been sent for further study, Father Arnold would have been a fine teacher of seminarians. It was a simple decision for me to ask him to preach the homily here at my first mass, the only time I ever saw him with a page of notes. However, he hardly referred to that page, easily drawing together his thoughts on the priesthood from scripture and experience, and even including some Shakespeare. While I will never be in the same category as Father Arnold, it is a privilege and honour to return the favour today. Father Arnold was gentle with children at their first reconciliation and just as gentle encouraging young people returning to the sacrament after years away. He could be counted on for being available here for confessions every Saturday morning with many of all ages devoted to the sacrament at St Philip's. He was very generous to his flock at Christmas time, he very quietly gave money in an envelope to a large family. The recipient revealed this for the first time this week. One wonders how many other anonymous recipients there were over the years. Up until the 1980s, the church used at the parish was a temporary one. It became the parish hall, the old Donovan Centre. Father Arnold was being urged by the archdiocese to build a permanent church as originally planned. However, he did not want to burden his people with a huge parish debt. He had been the recipient of a family inheritance. So Father Arnold used that money to build this church and the presbytery, most people not being aware of that at the time. There was no parish debt. Father Arnold lived a life of simplicity to an extent that made us smile. For example, in order not to waste money on heating in the presbytery, he would wear his dressing gown over his suit on cold days. When the tramways were selling off their dark green suits, he bought a number of them and dyed them black. 
which kept him in suits for years. For his 25th anniversary of priesthood, the ladies auxiliary wanted to buy him a new suit. He was furious, adamant that he did not need one. They bought him a different gift. In the early 1980s in that old church, a group of parishioners began praying the rosary after mass during November. They asked Father Arnold if it would be okay if they kept the practice going permanently. Father Arnold agreed on the condition that the group offered the rosary for vocations. To this day, that rosary is still prayed here for vocations, with some of the original members still here. An inspired request from Father Arnold, the parish has produced two priests, Father Gregory Woodcock, who joined the Legionaries of Christ in the 80s, and myself for the Archdiocese of Melbourne. Father Arnold told me that Archbishop Mannix had told his group of priests that they needed to make sure they replaced themselves with one vocation for the Archdiocese. He was content on my ordination day that he had done just that. It is rather unusual for a parish priest to baptise a boy, accompany him through the other sacraments and still be his parish priest when he's ordained a deacon. I'm also sure that that will not be the last vocation coming from St Philip's. In being our shepherd in this parish for 36 years, Father Arnold imitated Christ's desires as we heard him praying to the Father in today's Gospel. He wanted us to know the Father, preaching and teaching us well continually. He knew that the world was moving further away from God and he wanted us to remain true to the teachings of Christ in his church in the midst of this world. This is a funeral, not a canonization, and Father Arnold would not be pleased that I have tended somewhat towards canonization. So let us now turn our minds to prayer, giving thanks to God for Father Arnold and praying for the repose of his soul. May we be inspired by his virtue, orthodoxy, fidelity to Christ and his church as we commend Father Arnold's soul to the Lord. God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ, his Son, from the dead. With confidence, we ask him to save all his people, living and dead. For Father Arnold, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he now be admitted to the company of the saints. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For Father Arnold, who shared in the priesthood of Jesus Christ, leading God's people in prayer and worship, bring him into your presence where he will take his place in the heavenly liturgy. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that she may continue to have priests dedicated to the growth of the spiritual life of their people. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For the departed family, members and friends of Father Arnold, may God welcome them into his glory. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For, for all who, ha who are gathered here in faith and confidence to pray for Father Arnold, strengthen our hope that we may live in expectation of your son's coming. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have cared for <coughs> Father Arnold through his life, may they continue 
the, the healing ministry of Christ and witness to his compassion. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our shelter and our strength, listen in love to the cry of your people. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that through these holy mysteries, Francis, your servant and priest, may behold with clarity forever what he faithfully ministered here. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of the immortal, immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory. As without end we are claimed. Merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, my brother auxiliaries, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all who gathered here, whose faith and de devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and for all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter, and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints, 
We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. With eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and with once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and protest your resurrection until you are again. Therefore, our Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servant Francis, and all who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light and peace. To us also your servants, who though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
that as Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of our and the glory of your Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of salvation, we implore your kindness, O God, for Francis, your servant and priest, that as you made him a steward of your mysteries on earth, so you may bring him to nourish, to be nourished by their truth and reality as unveiled in heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother Francis. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother and priest, Francis, in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon him in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with all the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, Turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and priest, Francis, and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. Through Christ our Lord.
and in peace let us take our brother to his place of rest.